What's up, everybody? This is Kyle, your solar guy. Today, we're talking about um, frequently asked questions from people that are interested in going solar or learning more about solar. Um, the types of questions that I get a lot uh, in the comments and things like that. And I wanted to make a video where um, I answer a bunch of them. So just kind of go through a list that we have and uh, hopefully address questions that you may have. And one of the things, too, is I'm not I wanted to answer it from a uh, an honest like a, 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 a guy who works in solar like a solar guy's perspective without uh giving you the additional like sales spin that you might get if you were to talk to people uh on the phone in your local community and things like that because obviously if you reach out to someone who you know that's professional and they sell solar um you, you don't want that the conversation necessarily get awkward uh, if you're just looking for the information so that's the kind of deal with this video um, is to hopefully give you uh, my personal opinion and perspective on a lot of the, the, the kind of intricacies and the details uh, of going solar and hopefully you find it helpful so let's let's get to it so number one number one uh most asked question uh for first time solar seekers is how does solar work so on the technical side, I actually have a video that talks about how like the panels work. Um, but a lot of times when I encounter people that have this question, they're talking about uh, the money, the financing aspect, the how are you able to save money with solar. And so solar panels work in, uh, in a simplified way. It's like buying something that's going to be a power plant uh, and it can go on your roof. And then rather than renting electricity from the utility company, because the utility company has the infrastructure and the systems and their sources of energy, they're doing all this stuff on their own. They ha probably have their own solar panels and you're paying to use their energy. Rather than doing that, you're able to say, hey, I wanna buy these panels, I wanna put them on my roof and they're gonna produce energy that goes to you first. When you do that, you're going to be able to get energy at a, a very, very cheap rate, hopefully. And then a lot of utility companies even have where they're willing to buy the energy from you and give you a credit on your bill or even pay you out. So that is kind of like the overview of how it works. Rather than renting your energy from the utility company, you're able to put money towards something that you own. And that thing that you own is going to produce your energy instead. How much does it cost? So a lot of these questions, the answer is going to be, it depends. So I apologize in advance because I know it's not the answer that you guys, that you want, um, but I'll give a very brief overview and explain why. So the average system, I would say probably costs between 15 and 40, $45,000 total. And then most of the time uh, when you're purchasing a system, most of the time there's there's financing involved and the financing for the systems is uh, typically spread out over a, a longer duration. Um, and that monthly cost amount uh, that people are paying on their, their solar system is I would say on average 75 to $200 per month. The reason that this is such a tough question is because there's so many factors that impact the cost um, and it, it, the, the, the roof, the direction the roof faces, the slope of the roof, how much energy you need is going to directly dictate how many panels you need to buy, what brand of panels you're using. Um, some cost more, maybe are premium, some cost less, and maybe are a little bit cheaper, uh, what company you're doing it with. I mean, there's so many different factors that impact the cost. And so I don't like throwing out these like, hey, it costs on average between 15 and $40,000 in most cases, uh, because that's a big number that does scare people away. And my ultimate goal is to uh, help the majority of people who are doing financing to see if we can get solar and get them moving towards with solar and hopefully have a, a lower monthly cost than what they're currently paying. Because if we can buy a system like that and then rather than paying the utility 200 bucks a month, you're only paying 125 a month. I mean, that's kind of a, a win-win for everybody. So, but in general, I mean, systems do cost anywhere from 15 to 45,000 and more. Uh, if you have an extra big system, they can cost upwards of 70, 80, 90 plus thousand dollars. Um, and once again, that all depends on the amount of energy that you use. What incentives are available for my home? So the biggest incentive to American homeowners is the federal ITC, the federal solar tax credit. And what that does is it gives homeowners uh, basically a tax credit that uh, amounts to 26% of the project cost. And so 26% of the cost that you spend on solar, the government is willing to give you that back in a tax credit. 
and uh, basically they're willing to help you pay for 26% of it. Um, in addition to that, other incentives vary depending on the state and the utility and local levels. I mean, there's various uh, incentives that are applicable. Um, that's why it's important to speak with an expert because they're able to give you a kind of like a summary of everything that you qualify for in your market. Some states like New Mexico and South Carolina, for example, have uh, upwards of 25% additional tax credit that will get added on top of the federal tax credit. So in addition to the federal government giving you 26%, the state government sometimes would give you, hey, we'll give you the other 25%. And right there, you already have 50% of the system cost is getting paid for by somebody else. So every state is different. And then at the local level, a few counties and cities sometimes have little things, but the biggest one is you want to look into your utility company. What is it that they have to offer? Uh, what are what are the incentives that they have? And then the biggest one is what is their net metering policy? Are they willing to pay you for the energy that they're buying back from you? Because that is going to impact uh, your monthly costs and the total monthly uh, bill that you're either getting or not getting from the utility company. What size solar system do I need for my house? It depends. Uh, a lot of people ask this question because they're either a, looking to get a bunch of quotes from all these different companies, or B, they want to do it themselves. Um, and it, it, you can just say a general uh, number uh, because, it, it's, because it completely depends on your energy usage. How much energy do you use? Because that's going to dictate um, how productive and how efficient eight panels is going to be. If you have eight panels on a house with someone that doesn't even like turn the lights on, uh, that, that might be enough for their house. But for people that use a lot more electricity, uh, they're going to need a much larger system. So the size of the system does fully depend on uh, your electricity usage. And then occasionally there's a few uh, other factors that might kind of make a smaller system better in very rare circumstances. Uh, but that is the answer is that it does depend. Uh, it, it depends on how much energy you use. Why do solar companies need to see the bill? So the reason solar companies need to see your utility bill is because that is the easiest way for us, for solar professionals to get the information that we need to give you an exact quote. So it tells us how much electricity you use, not only how much electricity you use, but how your usage varies from one month to the next. And then in addition to that, it also tells us how much you're paying for your electricity. And once we have that information, we're able to give you a kind of a, an apples to apples comparison, which is this is how much it costs for you to stay with the utility company. This is how much it would cost if you were to go solar. And that is the reason that we ask for the utility bill. Can I go off grid? So some people that are, I would say the majority of people that are attracted to solar nowadays is because they are interested in the financial aspect, the savings. But a lot of people that come to solar are more concerned about uh, their security and their independence from the utility company. So this is something that does come up a lot when you first go on the phone with people is they want to be off the grid. And unfortunately, off the grid is uh, it's possible, but it's very rare and it is, makes things much more challenging. So it's only available in certain areas. Is it even possible? And the reason for that is because just because you have solar on your house, um, you're still using and relying on the utility company's infrastructure. And obviously there's a bunch of reasons for that. Utility companies don't really want people to go off the grid because that means they're losing customer forever. Um, and then also just from a comfort and a security, it, it helps so that, for example, if you have solar panels and it's nighttime, your solar panels aren't producing energy, you want the grid to be able to go there and buy electricity when uh, your panels just aren't producing enough. So is it possible to go off the grid? Yes. Is it easy? Not really. Another thing to consider also is that a lot of people that want to go off the grid are doing it because they're really just concerned about um, power outages for blackouts. Um, and one of the things you're able to do is purchase battery systems and battery units, which have become much more popular in recent years, mainly due to Tesla and the Tesla Powerwall kind of entering the market. Battery units will help you to uh, keep the lights on when there are blackouts, but you are still reliant on the grid. So just because you have a battery installed, it does not mean that your house is going to be off the grid. Um, you're still tied to the utility and their infrastructure. Does my roof get damaged? So the answer is it shouldn't. Um, obviously accidents happen and 
Um, there are some uh, companies that maybe are better at installing than others, um, but most of the time the, the roof is it shouldn't be damaged and there's an additional warranty that covers any damage to the roof for not only uh, the immediate future for but for a few years after the installation takes place. So the answer to that is the installation itself will not hurt the roof. And then one thing that other people don't even realize is uh, getting solar onto your roof will actually do a better job of protecting your house, protecting your roof um, during natural disasters and things like hurricanes. Uh, I have photos that I send to people all the time that are like, uh, a hurricane came through and there's these houses these houses are completely demolished and destroyed and it's missing the roof and everything looks awful except for the one portion of the roof that had solar panels so the solar panels are, are very secure they're very strong they, they make it less likely that the roof under the panels is going to get damaged in the future and then once again the installation uh, itself will not damage the roof and if for any reason it does uh, it is covered in the warranty that you signed with the solar panel. How much is maintenance? So maintenance is almost non-existent. I mean, I think the only maintenance that is typically done with solar panels that is recommended is making sure that you get them cleaned so that they're always producing um, as well as you would like. Basically making sure that they don't have uh, an inch layer of dirt and dust on top of them that's preventing them from uh, producing. But other than that, I mean, all maintenance uh, is is kind of taken care of because the panels are sturdy, because they are well built, and because once they're installed, there isn't really much that you have to do to make sure that they're working effectively. It, obviously, things happen. Um, there are bad uh, panels, there's things that malfunction, and there's things that go wrong. And typically, all of that is covered in the warranty. So most solar companies give at least a 25-year warranty on the panels themselves. Um, and if for any reason, if they aren't working or aren't producing like they should, that warranty covers not only the replacement, um, but the work to come out and fix it. So as far as maintenance goes, there really isn't that much. How will the weather affect energy production and are they resilient? So the weather does affect energy production, but it doesn't affect it as much as some people think. And the reason for that is because obviously solar panels work best in direct sunlight, beautiful day, no clouds in the air, like that's, that's how they work best. But even on cloudy and foggy days, um, the light that gets through the clouds and that's reflecting off one thing or the other, that still goes to your panels and they are able to still produce the energy. And then the second part of that question was, are the panels resilient? Uh, they're incredibly resilient. I tell people this all the time. One of the things that a lot of people don't realize is, yes, they're made like everyone calls them like it's glass, like, oh, it's glass on the roof. Um, but they really, really are sturdy and strong. I've seen 250 pound guys uh, like jump on them with the purpose of trying to break panels and they are unable to do so. And that is something that uh, a lot of people don't realize. They aren't fragile, they're very strong, they're very sturdy, and they're very resilient. So once again, going back to that, the example earlier, which was about a hurricane, um, things like, uh, I mean, balls hitting it, rocks hitting it, hail hitting the panels, it, it typically is not gonna be something that you ever need to worry about. Um, and if it is, then once again, the warranty hopefully would cover it. Will solar power prevent power outages? No, so solar, pa solar panels will not prevent power outages unless you uh, install and use uh, battery storage systems. And even when you're using battery storage systems, um, they a lot of times you're, you, you have power for your house, you're able to keep the lights on, but depending on the size of the battery, you may or may not be able to run all the, the biggest appliances that you're used to running. So it, it, does, it will be able to help you in, in those times when uh, keeping the lights on and keeping the minimum stuff running and kind of light operational. Uh, solar can't do that. Solar with batteries can, but there is limitations as far as if you have a, a Bitcoin mining <laughs> situation in your basement that uses a ton of electricity, uh, the batteries might not be able to power that. Or if you're trying to run the dishwasher and the washer and dryer at the same time, uh, batteries might be limited in their ability to, to power that. But solar panels themselves do not uh, prevent blackouts. How long will my system last? So we're uh, systems are they last quite a while and so the warranties themselves for the panels uh, guarantee their production over at least 25 years typically there's even some and you can ask for an extended warranty that might go up to 30 years um, and so that's kind of the the minimum that you would expect the panels to last is 25 to 30 years 
Um, but the answer is really, we're not 100% sure because solar panels haven't really been around that long. We haven't had solar panels uh, or very few solar panels that have been sitting out for 30 plus years um, to let us know eventually whenever it is that they die. Um, and so my, what I tell people is the warranties are good for 25 to 30 years. In my personal and professional opinion, I would expect them to last much longer. Their usage and their effectiveness is going to deteriorate, but there are panels that the first solar panels that were ever installed, like back in the 1980s are still up and running. They're still doing fine. And solar panels nowadays are so much better that I would expect them to last a very long time. Can I install solar panels myself? Yes. You can. It's not something that I recommend, not not just because I'm in uh, the industry and I help people with it, but because it's one of those things that not necessarily the installation themselves, but the, the paperwork and uh, the organizations that you have to work with to get permitting and everything approved. Uh, that's where the, the challenges typically come for someone who's uh, doing it themselves. Uh, if you're a contractor, if you're familiar with everything, if you're very confident in your abilities, then feel free. It'll definitely uh, save you quite a bit uh, on the price and money. Um, it's not necessarily something that I recommend to uh, the average person who's looking to install it themselves just like as a, 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 ho a hobby. But if you are a contractor, you have experience, you're used to, to working with permits and then also making sure that you have all the documentation that's needed to be filed with uh, your tax professional as well as the government, as well as the utility company. Um, as long as you kind of review all that ahead of time, then it's definitely something that you can take care of yourself. And then a follow up question, I guess, is what is the actual cost of do it yourself solar? Just the equipment, really. I mean, that's that's really all there is. A lot of times utility companies will charge you uh, whatever their interconnection fee is, which is like not a lot at all. Maximum hundreds of bucks. Um, but the equipment itself is all you're really, really paying for. So you're cutting out the cost of um, the installation crews. You're cutting out the cost of the salesperson. You're cutting out um, all those little ancillary costs that go in through a sales process um, and you are able to save quite a bit of money if you are able to do it yourself. Uh, once again, I don't recommend it, but there's a lot of people out there that want to look into that and want to make sure that that's possible and it, it definitely is. So there you have it. My name's Kyle. I, uh, I appreciate uh, you watching this video. I hope it answered some questions that you may or may not have had um, and I hope it gave you some more clarity about uh, solar and why it's such a, a great product for a lot of people um, if you're getting tired of the utility companies charging you too much and then raising the rates on you every single year. So I hope that this helped. If you have any questions that weren't addressed in this video or questions that you watched this video and then you had a secondary question that uh, you wish I would have touched on, please let me know in the comments down below. I'll uh, try to get in the habit of creating this type of video uh, frequently and making sure that I'm able to answer uh, all the questions that you may have. As always, like, comment, and subscribe for more uh, helpful and educational content. And if you are interested in kind of getting a personalized quote saying, hey, solar seems pretty cool. I want to see what the numbers look like. Click the link down below. I'll be able to, we'll, we'll ask you a few questions. Uh, make sure that there's nothing that disqualifies you right off the bat. And then we'll be able to kind of dive into the numbers and go into what the savings numbers are going to look like for your home. So. I hope you enjoyed this video. I appreciate you watching this and I hope you guys have an awesome day.